Welcome to Conversations in the Coop. I'm your host, Trinity Director of Athletics, Drew Galbraith. And as we uh, forge into the new year, you'll see a new style from the Conversations in the Coop as we incorporate more video uh, into our podcast with Trinity Coaches and athletes. It's my pleasure to be joined in our uh, first edition of the 2023-24 school year by new head men's golf coach Jack Youngie. Jack, thanks for joining. Thank you so much, Drew. Happy to be here. So, uh, Jack, we're going to not only recap your, your career at Trinity, get a little, little thought about where the program's going, uh, but just start us off. You've now had a summer under your belt as the head coach of Trinity Men's Golf. Uh, how's it going so far? It's been great. It's been great. Um, you know, it's, it's been pretty cool uh, going to some junior golf tournaments, all decked out in, in Trinity Golf here. I know I remember when I was a junior golfer and just sort of being in awe of all the college coaches and, and hoping they would, they would come watch me. Um, so it's pretty cool to be on the other end of that, and I really enjoy going out there and evaluating all the kids and, uh, you know, talking to parents, talking to them after the round. So it's been very fun this summer. So um, let, let's go back maybe to the beginning. Um, as, as you were coming up through high school, uh, playing hockey, golf, did you play any, sport, any other sports in high school? Just hockey and golf. Okay, so you're, you're a high schooler uh, in the Chicagoland area, uh, playing hockey and golf. At what point did you, uh, as a high school student, think, okay, I've, I've really got a chance to do this at the college level. Uh, when, when did that really start to be an aspiration for you? Well, for golf, um, you know, I think fortunately I, I just sort of was talented from the start. Um, and I always had dreams of, you know, playing on the PGA Tour one day, maybe playing Division One golf. Uh, I know like back when I was an eighth grader and, or freshman in high school, I was, you know, wearing college, college hats like Wake Forest or UNC, thinking I was going to play there. Um, and then uh, as, it, as my golf career went on, you know, I, I grew like seven or eight inches in, in going from my sophomore to junior year of high school. Um, and that really messed up my golf swing. So I was, I was down in the dumps for a long time, uh, shooting a lot of rounds in the high 80s. So I think that sort of changed my perspective, changed um, the path that I was gonna take in college. Um, but, you know, fortunately when my golf game was struggling, my hockey career was, um, going very well. So, uh, you know, I would go sort of from season to season and, you know, even if the, if my golf wasn't great, then I knew I, you know, could go to hockey practice later that night and just sort of get out of my head with that and, and, uh, be involved with a different team, different sport. Um, so, you know, I, I had some more success with that in high school. Um, and then by my, you know, late junior year, I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe I'll, I'll try and find a place to play both sports. Um, and that, that led me to finding the NESCAC or to, to researching more about the NESCAC and um, kind of goes from there for, with, uh, you know, talking to Coach Greason. And then, uh, you know, I, when I showed up at Trinity, I just thought I was going to play golf, too. Um, and, you know, I, I spent the, my freshman year as, as a golfer, um, just going to hockey games as a, as a, you know, a fan. And as I got to know Coach Greason better, uh, I remember later in the spring of my freshman year, he was like, you know, how about uh, you come out to some hockey practices next year? And I was all about it, uh, anything to be part of the team there. So that was a very cool experience. So Jack, you come from a very uh, sporting family, uh, if you will. So um, did you feel maybe confident that, yeah, just given the background of my family, like I've got a chance to make this happen? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, my whole family is super positive. Uh, you know, we, we really encourage each other and, and push each other. So yeah, my, my father is a, a tennis pro at a, at a country club or director of tennis. And, uh, you know, he was a great influence on my athletic career. Um, never pushed me into tennis, but, um, you know, encouraged me to always do my best and to have a great attitude. Um, my mom's an exceptional athlete as well. Uh, she's still, you know, grinding every day um, in the gym, and and now she's she's taken up golf recently too. So she's going to the range just about every day as well. Um, and then both my sisters were Division One athletes, and um, and they both left the Midwest to to come out east to school, and and uh, I think I just wanted to follow in their footsteps for that. Um, and you know they're they're so impressive both athletically and um, they're they're way smarter than I am too. So I, I listen to everything they say. So so Jack, you when you got to Trinity and uh, and had this opportunity, um, you had that unique experience of being part of two programs that were winning NESCAC titles while you were a student here, uh, part of a golf team that uh, had the best finish ever in an NCAA championship. Um, 
how did that shape your Trinity experience? Because it is, um, in some ways, unique to have that level of success in not only one sport, but two sports. Yeah, I mean, it, it made my, my Trinity experience phenomenal, am- among many other things. But, um, you know, those those teammates of mine, they were, they were truly my brothers. Um, and for golf, I feel like we did such a great job of, of pushing each other. I mean, golf's an individual sport, but in college and high school, the, the team makes a huge difference, especially for me, um, where when I'm playing on my own, I always put so much pressure on myself for whatever reason. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only golfer that, that does that. Um, but being part of the Trinity golf team, um, we had so much camaraderie. And then, you know, when I'm out there, I'm not worried about missing a four footer, you know, because then I'm going to be pissed about it. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to make this for my teammates. Like I want, I want to do great because they're, I know they're doing the same thing for me. So we had that in golf season and then, um, moving on to hockey season. I mean, that was a team of just pure excellence from the coaching staff, um, throughout the roster. I mean, those were all players that, you know, probably could have played division one, um, but ended up at Trinity and just being in the locker room, um, seeing how they go about their business, uh, and, you know, just, just having great relationships with all of them, uh, made the, the whole year, the whole experience incredible. When you were a student at Trinity, did you take anything kind of back and forth just in terms of maybe some of the, uh, you know, hockey is a, a grind of a season. It's it's the longest season we sponsor uh, mm-hmm. in Trinity. So there's just a lot going on in a hockey season. So comparing that to golf, which is just about kind of maintaining the even keel. There aren't the, hopefully there aren't the highs and lows um, that take you out of your game. So were there things that you found yourself doing that might have been a result of being on that other team? Yeah, maybe. And I think definitely in my coaching now, I, I take a little bit of more hockey approach into golf and have that more of a team aspect, which I think is helpful. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Well, just more around, you know, were were there things that you took back and forth? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think being a goalie and a golfer are are actually more similar than than people may imagine. I mean, it's the mindset you you need to have is is the same in both. Like if I if I make a double bogey, I need to brush that off quickly before the next tee shot. In the same way, if I let in a, you know, a bad goal from the from the blue line, um, you know, I got to pull that puck out of the net and get ready for the next shot. So, so Jack, as you you wrap up at Trinity, you have an opportunity to stay on as an assistant golf coach and helping out the hockey programs. Uh, spent a year as the uh, women's golf coach uh, when when we as a department were in a pinch, and then um, this year uh, as we uh, elevated the men's golf coach to a full time role, um, you had the opportunity to step into that role. Uh, so now the last eight years you spent at Trinity, this will be year number nine in a row for you at Trinity. Um, what would you say, what what kind of keeps you here? What makes it so um, so rewarding for you to stay at a place like Trinity? It's the people here at Trinity. I mean, from my teammates, uh, my professors, and other classmates during my time as an undergrad, uh, I made so many, so many great relationships. And then throughout my coaching career, it's the same way I've, you know, developed a lot of friendships with other coaches um, while still being able to, you know, have great relationships with students. And and then I, I've learned so much about myself, about coaching over the last four years um, because I've been involved in so many different things, um, which has been, you know, good and bad. Sometimes I wish I could just focus on one, but, uh, you know, I, I know I wouldn't be in the place I am today if it wasn't for, you know, spending my years as an assist, a men's assistant um, coaching the goalies on the women's hockey team and, you know, doing the laundry for the hockey programs. Like, I, I feel like I've, I've put in the work. I paid my dues to, to get to where I am. And, and I'm not saying the college owes me anything. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's so special being part of my alma mater. And, and uh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the, the future of the Trinity golf team. So as you, when you talk to a prospective student, um, I'm sure, you know, one of the easy things to say, if they if they haven't read your bio, hopefully they have if they're having a conversation with the head coach, but if they haven't read your bio, how quickly does it come up that, yeah, I've lived this experience and it's pretty special? Usually pretty quickly, you know. Uh, I think you can, at least if you're a recruit, you can probably tell pretty quickly how passionate I am about Trinity. And I always say, like, I'm, I'm biased, but, it, um, 
you know, I could go on and on talking about all the great things that Trinity has to offer um, from the academics to the athletics to social life. Um, I just think it's the it's such a perfect balance of all three. And then top that off with the fact that you have one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. Um, and I mean, when I whenever I'm walking around by myself, you know, maybe up to lunch or walking around with a recruit, like I, I never get sick of seeing the chapel, seeing the quad, um, thinking about all the amazing memories I have with with my with my friends here. So um, I feel like when I when I talk to them, they can they can just feel the passion I have. What was the reaction when you got hired as the as the head coach this summer? Um, I know many of your teammates that you played with were uh, certainly very uh, interested in what was going to happen with the search. What was their reaction? Um, so you you know you obviously have um, some of your classmates who are getting ready for their fifth reunion, their first big reunion at Trinity uh, coming up next spring. What was their reaction, or the, some of the other uh, students you played with here? They were all so excited. Um, like they they know how much it means to me, and and it means so much to them too. I mean that's that's another amazing thing about Trinity is is the pride that. Um, current students have and, and alums have. Uh, so I think they were all happy to know that the program was in good hands. I, I hope, you know, I could do a horrible job, but we'll You're see. not going to do a horrible job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then, like, I think everyone also shared that appreciation for Coach Greason as well. I mean, um, you know, we sort of had known that he wanted to step into a role that was more devoted to hockey. Um, so, I mean, I remember talking to him when I was a senior and, and he was telling me, you know, I, I, I guess just foreshadowing a time when he wouldn't be the head, co the head mm -hmm. golf coach. And I, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, I can't imagine who would take over for him. Um, so I think everyone was happy that uh, it's, it's a person that, uh, you know, cares a ton about Trinity golf and, and wants to be great, too. I mean, I, I, would, I would love to bring a national championship to Hartford in the same way that Coach Creason did with the hockey program. So. That's really cool. So, talk. You, you've you've mentioned a couple of uh, people who I think you would probably count as mentors or, or major influences on your life. Your, your parents, uh, Coach Greason. Who are those mentors for you? Who are the people that have helped shape you into the you know the professional you are today? You're exactly right. I mean, I think it's it's Coach Greason and it's my family. I mean, Coach, uh, I feel he really matured me during my time at. Uh, at Trinity, and it, it wasn't always pretty. Um, you know, I, I took plenty of ribbing from him, but that's that's what I needed. Like, I think I needed to grow up a little bit. I needed to mature, um, and you know, he was he was that guy for me. And also, I will say, like, he he always he didn't have a, a set coaching style. Like, he always was adapting to whatever golfer he was talking to out on the course. Um, so that's something that I I'm going to try and take going forward, like knowing what your player, your student athlete needs and sort of um, accommodating him rather than, you know, only being the same way or, or, you know, maybe getting on a person that maybe that doesn't respond as well to that. Um, so he was, you know, huge and, and also getting me into this role I, I'm, I'm in now. And then, uh, yeah, my, my parents, uh, my, my father, like, I think he's he's the most wise, patient man in, in the world, uh, and he's an amazing tennis teacher as well. I, uh, what sets him apart is his ability to um, sort of change change the words of, of whatever lesson he's giving if, if someone's not quite uh, understanding. So just having a lot of different ways to say the same thing until that student finally um, understands what, what he's trying to teach. Um, my mom is... is Kind of a social chameleon. I mean, she's she, everyone loves my mom, uh, and I, you know, she's she's got a great sense of humor. Um, so I try and emulate that, and and uh, you know, be a person that everyone wants to be around. And then my sisters as well. Uh, they're both super hardworking, uh, very very smart, really thoughtful and creative. Um, and they also just they just get the job done too. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a procrastinator, and and they like get on me for that. I mean. They'll uh, if they they are the the queens of to do lists like they uh, they just knock tasks tasks out and uh, and take care of business. So it's when we're all together, it's uh, it's a pretty pretty fun family dynamic. Did you get a chance? You know, part of your role is also as a uh, as a faculty member in the PE department, and so part of your title is assistant professor. Have you thrown that in your sisters' faces yet? 
Yes, along with my okay. master's as well. You yeah. know, I think my master's from Trinity is a lot better than, than Jesse's undergrad at Dartmouth. All right. So good. I'm glad it's I'm glad you're using that to you <laughs> to your benefit. So um and you, you talked a lot there about situational leadership and uh which I think is really kind of telling, particularly in an individual sport like golf, where uh it's it's truly the only sport uh that we have where there's truly no one else uh, that's going to impact you. Maybe you could talk about something like a uh, like a thrower in track and field where it's really only them against the distance. Um, but in golf, it's four, if you're lucky, four hours, but four and a half hours, and it's you and your ball. And you may have people that you're playing with in the round who are also competing for score, but what they do has no bearing on on what you do. So how do you, how do you find ways to connect with each golfer and what have you found uh, in your career have been the best ways to um, you know to help people through that process of you know going up and just focusing on yourself and not worrying about what everybody else is doing yeah and and first of all the college golf is probably closer to five and a half six hour yeah. rounds so that's a that's a long long time of trying to maintain your focus and concentration um, and I guess for that I, you can't there's there's no one way that's going to fit each player out there some some players are are super serious on the course and you know they're not talking to their playing partners uh and then there's the opposite you have the the extreme extroverts who are making friends on the first tee and they're they're chatting the whole time so i think you need to stick with your personality type like i always say um you know if if you're one of those extroverts that talks a lot and then you know you have a few bad holes and you start being going silent like that's when things are going to start to spiral for you so you need to keep that conversation up uh to avoid putting yourself in a stressful environment um and then you know there's there's uh different things for other people too you know if um it's hard to let go of of bad shots sometimes and and i mean you see it on the PGA tour one one bad swing can change everything. Um, so I think it's just doing your best to sort of stay in, in the routine. Um, and you know, you, you have the same mindset you do on the first hole as you do on the 18th. You, you need to have good focus, a good attitude, um, you know, whatever that, that means for you. You know, I'm not saying, obviously I don't want anyone throwing clubs, but if you need to, to get some anger out, uh, in order to get back to, to playing your best golf, then, then go for it. Uh, personally, I'm a little more stoic, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it you know it's different for everyone. How, how quickly, when you are, uh, we've got a, some first year golfers starting in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. How quickly do you get to learn their style so that um, when you're walking the course, you can be. There are some players you you know just to leave them alone, mm-hmm. or are you somebody who every couple of holes needs you know just just a few words just to keep that focus? How quickly do you learn that? Uh, I think it takes time. Um, so, I mean, both golfers we have coming in this year, uh, Thomas and Michael, they're really, really good players. So they don't, I, I like, just, my coaching is not going to take them to the next level right now. So I think at the beginning, it's it's all about building trust. Um, fortunately, I, I feel like I already have developed pretty good relationships with them. So I think we'll be getting off on a good foot. Uh, but, you know, I just want to let them do their thing for a little bit. Um, I'm not going to come in and, and start coaching immediately because uh, I don't think they would respond well to that. So, I mean, you know, th- they'll play in tournaments. I, I would I would like to walk around with them um, as a, you know, guide because I know the courses pretty well, but I'm not telling them what to do. I think they need to make their own decisions. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll learn from that as we go. So the game of golf continues to shift. And um, for people who are really into golf or are big on golf Twitter, you know, they see the analytics of, of what goes on. And so there's a lot of, lot of different ways other than just looking at straight score to quantify how people are playing. Um, uh, just last weekend, uh, Bryson DeChambeau shot a 58 in the final round of a tournament. And then by Wednesday, based on some of the analytics of the round, the course was playing pretty easy. Uh, so therefore, maybe it wasn't as great a round as some other you know, 61s or 62s. Yeah. At the end of the day, you you play the course you're playing, and, and he shot a 58 on a on a uh, pro level course. So, 
what, what's your philosophy around analytics? Where do you see it going? And, and what do you think are maybe the most useful tools for our golfers right now? That's a good question. And honestly, I'm not as, anal- as uh, analytics focused as some other golf coaches may be. Um, but I, I think you, may, you bring up a good point, and that's, that's playing in, in your environment and competing in your environment. So, you know, you, like the, the Bryson 58, um, that's, a, that's an incredible, incredible round, maybe. And then you, you look at the analytics, and, and maybe it's not as impressive as the some 61s or 62s, as you said. And then I think you could you could say the same thing about golf in New England or golf anywhere. I mean, um, so I, I try and tell my student athletes like your score doesn't identify who you are as a person. So or and you know and then you also have to take your scores with a grain of salt. Like you know if you shoot a seventy eight um, at Williams in pouring rain and windy conditions, uh, you know. If you just look and see 78, maybe you're not going to be blown away. But then the more you you, you look into it, like that's that's a heck of a round. Um, so I think you know you just have to compete as hard as you can in, in whatever environment it is. Um, and then as far as the the analytics go, um, you know some people love that and and that makes a huge uh, difference in in course management or how they approach their round. One one stat I I will. Uh, tell a lot of people is Jason Day in 2015. He, he was the number one player in the world. Jason Day is also my favorite golfer. Um, so And he was a phenomenal driver of the golf ball at this time, driving it better than anyone. And uh, a couple people came out and, and um, took stats on a range session. So he's out on a driving range, flat surface, no wind, um, you know, perfect conditions. And they wanted to see the how the dispersion of his of his tee shots and the furthest left so the the distance between the furthest left tee shot and the furthest right was 65 yards like that's a huge number that's for for the best golfer and at the time and you know you have 10 handicaps out here thinking that they're going to hit the mid center of the fairway every time and getting mad at themselves for for hitting bad tee shots or, or bad shots like it's going to happen you need so i, I think for me the, the analytics and stats help me manage my expectations. So, you know, if, if I miss a six foot putt, I'm not saying, oh, you know, I should have had that and I'm, you know, letting that derail my round. I'll say, no, you know what? Even the tour pros miss that 50% of the time, or maybe it's eight feet, they miss it 50% right. of the time. Um, so, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt. And I think that that sort of helps you keep a better attitude throughout the round. Is there any one piece that you do find pretty useful? Uh, whether it's you know swing speed, spin rate, anything like that, or or is it all kind of they're just data points and they can be helpful, but they can also take you down paths that aren't really helpful. Yeah, you know, so we have a, a track man at Trinity, which is a huge resource and can help you get a lot better. Um, and it shows all of your numbers, so you know swing speed, uh, spin, everything, anything you would you would possibly want to know. Anytime I bring that to practice, and it, it just ends up in a long drive contest, and that was that was the same when I was a when I was a student too. Like, I mean, we'd hit a, a few shots, be like, all right, you know, take that and, and try and fix our swings, and then the next person would go on and they just start swinging as hard as they can. Right. And before you know it, we're we're all just just ripping drivers. So, um, you know, it's I guess it's not the the most useful, but uh, I have some great memories of that too. And so uh, bringing it back to Trinity, Jack, um, you you have such a unique experience at Trinity and you can speak from experience to almost, I would imagine, almost any question a student might ask other than, you know, did you take this one particular course? No, I didn't. And I don't know anybody who has. But other than that, you've lived this experience uh, as a student athlete, as a coach um, and an alum. So... When you get the question from a student or their parents, like what makes Trinity special? What what's what's your answer? What's your answer about the secret sauce uh, that that makes Trinity such a unique place? Yeah, I, I could I could go a lot of different ways, um, and I usually sort of will tailor it to the recruit or uh, or whoever I'm talking to. But I, I think at the end of the day, it's it's just the people. Um, you know, I've I've met some incredible friends through my Trinity experience. Uh, and, and I think what all brings us together is the, the Trinity pride and the, 
passion we had, what we have now um, for, for the current Bantams and, and what we had when we were playing. Uh, so I think just having that, um, you know, shared experience is, is so special. And then just, you know, I think the location where we are too, um, you know, the campus uh, and, uh, you know, everything that comes with it. So, I, you know, I, I, I could go, like I said, I could go a lot of different ways, but for me, that's, that's what I, what I carry with the most. I mean, I just, I just got back from a trip uh, with some Trinity hockey teammates uh, and we had the best time. I mean, they they want to know like what's going on at Trinity now. And then, you know, we're talking about all of our um, great times together too. So it was, it was very cool. Jax, thanks. We wish you best of luck this season. It gets going uh, right after the start of classes, and you'll a uh, uh, bunch of tournaments in the fall and then the championship season in spring. So best of luck. Thanks, Drew. want to thank Jack Youngie for joining us on this conversation in the coop. Uh, for all the latest Trinity news, scores, schedules, go to bantamsports.com. Until next time, this is Conversations in the Coop.